everybody and welcome to our online experience and for those of you here in Cebu welcome to day 106 of our quarantine uh, according to my calculations at least and um, how are you doing in this time you know I I always remember this my best friend John would always when when he would ask me how are you doing he would always follow it up with no how are you really doing and so you know, because our default is to say, well, I'm doing fine, and, you know, but it's it's not fine. And um, so I'll ask you, how are you doing this morning? Uh, no, how are you really doing? Because we're struggling. We, you know, we, uh, we're all having challenges. We're all in this together. So let us know how we can be praying for you. Stay in touch with us on social media. We want to continue to stay connected as best as we can. And so uh, I'm glad that we have this you know, way to do it and stay connected online. Last week, I started a series called The Wander Years and talking about the whole idea that, uh, you know, this being in quarantine and now I guess we're, we moved from ECQ to what some are calling SECQ, the Surprise Enhanced Community Quarantine. For those of you that aren't in Cebu, um, military kind of showed up this week and got involved and took over because we need to put an end to this and things are, are really um, different here. And so, we're, we're adjusting to the newest of new, 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 new normals, I guess. And so, um, but we talked about last week the, um, the Israelites and from the book of Exodus, the example where they faced their deserts, their struggles, their challenges. And some of them were a literal desert of them being out in the desert. And some were a symbolic or figurative desert. And, um, and we're there. You know, because we have our desert with COVID-19 and our quarantine and the uncertainty and not knowing when it's going to be over. And many of you having financial struggles during this time, all of that. And so, but we talked about how God came through for the Israelites every single time. And so hopefully as we kind of frame our situation through the example of what the Israelites experienced, knowing that God, the same God that came through for them, can come through for us. And so hopefully that gave you a little bit of hope. And so today, Ken Stuckey, a longtime friend of Quest Fellowship, is going to, to speak with us. And um, he's going to talk about the whole idea that eventually um, we're going to be beyond this. Eventually, we're going to be beyond quarantine. We're going to be on lockdowns. We're going to be on, you know, all of the things that go with it, the uncertainty. And we're going to get back to normal or the new normal, so they say, whatever that is. And so um, we talked about last week, you know, what am I learning in quarantine? And so Ken's going to kind of build on that and talk about uh, what are we learning in quarantine that we want to actually take into the next season with us into the new normal, if you will. So that's what Ken's going to discuss with us. And here he is with part two of our series, The Wander Years. Hi, my name is Ken. And as Les just mentioned, um, we were with Quest from the very, very beginning. Um, in fact, my wife, DJ, she was the very, very first Upstreet director. And it is so great and so awesome to see how far along Quest has come through the help from their volunteers and through the help of everyone that just gives their time freely to the ministries at Quest um, and, and just the impact that has been made throughout the community and your communities and the people that have gotten to know Jesus and have a growing relationship with Jesus Christ through Quest and through your hard work. <clears throat> it's, just, it's just great. We love to visit Quest every time we go back to Cebu. Um, I, I don't know when the next time will be. Uh, certainly not right now. Certainly not with all this COVID-19 going on. But um, <clears throat> at some point some things will go back to normal and I cannot wait for things to go back to normal. Um, I know the new normal, as they call it, is not going to be the same as the, as the normal that we're used to, but any kind of normal just sounds, ah, uh, sounds so good right now. And I think most of us can, can agree that we're just, we're just tired. We're just tired of all this. Um, for example, 
I, I, I used to go to a barber and I started to look like a caveman because I couldn't because of social distancing and all that. And um, I decided to just shave my head. So, you know, here we go. I can't, I can't wait to go back to a barber. I can't wait to go back to, to a restaurant. I can't wait to go back and, you know, have the kids go play outside with their friends, go to a playground. Um, and I know that the church is people, but I can't wait to get into a church building or a church facility and actually hang out with my friends again. Um, you know, give them appropriate hugs and, 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 and just, it, it's just going it, to, it's, it's going to be awesome. Uh, and I just can't wait for that to happen. But in the meantime, we're stuck, we're stuck in this, uh, pandemic. And, um, I, I try to see the good things out of the situations that I'm in and that we're all in. And one of the good things that I've learned, um, in this pandemic is something that I want to bring from this time, this season of our life into the new normal. Like for example, I got to spend so much time with my family. I got to spend so much time with my kids and most, <laughs> most of that time was really, really good. Um, there are times where my children act like they belong in a zoo or something, or um, they fight too much, or, um, you know, how about parents? If you're a parent and you got kids or teenagers, or maybe you yourself struggle with this as well, but how hard is it to get those kids off those electronic devices, iPads, or whatever it is that you play with. Um, it, but I understand it, I get it. What else is there to do? We can't do anything. Um, but most of the time we, we, we spent some really, really good times together. We, um, we, you know, we did a lot of projects around the house. We've painted a couple of rooms. We, read, we painted both our bathrooms. We got to sit at the dinner table every single night not just to eat but to sit down and talk and enjoy one another um my kids and i we go play basketball outside in our in our front yard um mackie our, our little daughter she is she's really into soccer right now so she loves to play soccer we ride our bikes around um the front of our house we do so many things together and usually our schedules are so rushed and so crammed with all the things that we need to do, work things, meetings, uh, church stuff, life groups, kids activities, the list goes on and on. And we would just rush through dinner and then go right on to whatever was next in our schedule. And if I think about the old normal and the way we used to just cram our schedule full of stuff, um, I, I feel that we kind of missed out on relationships, uh, specifically starting with our families. Um, I've just enjoyed being with my kids and my wife and that is one thing that I learned during this season of our life that I definitely want to bring into the new normal. Last week Pastor Les was talking about comparing COVID-19 and this season of COVID-19 to kind of like being in a desert and it definitely feels like a desert sometimes. We're just wandering around, wondering when will this end? We're not sure how to get out of this. We don't even know how this all started, really. This just got dropped onto us. And if it was up to us, we would have never chosen to walk into this desert ourselves. But, you know, here we are. And our primary focus right now, your primary focus right now is to try and stay healthy, and get out of this. How can we get out of this desert? And I get it. I want this to end as well. I want to get to the new normal as well. The problem is when we're trying to get out of the desert, um, we begin to realize that we have zero control over our situation. We have zero control out of this. And when, when, when things turn desperate like this, when we realize we don't have any control, uh, many of us, um, most people, they turn to, to a higher power. And even if you're not a Jesus follower, even if you're not like a church person, everybody at some point in their desert, in their life, begins to pray. Like, God, I don't know if you're real, but I need help. Those of us that know for, for sure that, that God is real, you know, we pray the same things. God, I know you're there. I know you can do this. I know you're trying to teach us something, but please deliver us from this. Even people that don't pray, 
you know, they've never prayed before. They, they, they don't know how to pray. It's kind of like, um, dear to whom it may concern, if you're there and if you care, help, please. And I'm not making fun of people that don't pray. I'm not making fun of God. Um, but when a person, any person, pours their, pours their heart to God in prayer, something amazing happens. And what, what, what prayer highlights in our life is that prayer reminds us that we are dependent on something that is way bigger than us. So last week, Pastor Les talked about the, the nation of Israel and how dependent on God that they were. So just a really quick recap here. The nation of Israel was a slave nation. Um, it started off with a handful of people living in Egypt, um, and then they grew and they grew and their numbers multiplied so much that the Egyptians started being scared and afraid of the numbers of the Israelites, and they decided to enslave all of them. And even though they were enslaved, they continued to grow in numbers, and they were a slave nation that was experiencing a desert in their life and they cried out to their God. They cried out. They wanted to be delivered. They wanted this to end. They wanted freedom from the oppression of Egypt and God heard their prayers and God answered their prayers. And actually in the book of Exodus, we read exactly, exactly how God heard them and what God decided to do. So if you want to read along with me in chapter three of the book of Exodus, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. See, when I read this, I, it encourages me to read this. It's great because it shows that God sees and he is concerned about us and about any kind of troubles that we may be going through in our lives. He continues, so... I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, put yourselves in the shoes of the Israelites and you're hearing this message from God. Not only is God listening to you, not only is God going to free you from slavery, He is going to bring you into a land that is so amazing you cannot even imagine. It's why it's called the promised land because it was promised to them years and years and years ago, but it's even better than what they could have imagined or dreamed or even wished for. As the story goes, um, Moses is sent by God and he goes to the Pharaoh and he says those famous words of his, let my people go, and the Pharaoh refuses and refuses and refuses until God decides to send him some incentives. And these were not cash incentives. God sent them plagues. Um, and finally, uh, Pharaoh decides to let his slave labor force go. And then two, maybe two and a half million Israelites, the nation of God, exits Egypt. And now they're free. But that doesn't mean that their troubles are over, right? Because wandering around in the desert for the next 40 years, that's, that's not ideal either. Over and over, they would complain against God. They would grumble against Moses, their leader. Um, they were hungry. They were thirsty. And early in the story, they were still being pursued by Pharaoh's army because he changed his mind. And he went to go get them back. And now the Israelites were trapped between the sea and Pharaoh's army. And they didn't know what was going to happen. They cried out to God. They did not see a way out and God heard them and God provided for them. Every time they cried out to God, God provided for them. Sometimes God would provide for them in exactly how they thought he would. There was other times where God provided and, and gave solutions that they would have never have imagined. So what we learned last week about, about the Israelites and the story of Israel is I think very applicable to our story here today, um, is that deliverance in the desert or deliverance from the desert came through a dependence on God. That deliverance from the desert came through a dependence on God. There's so much we can learn about that for our days, or for our situations today. So today, um, 
I'm going to look at the end of that story. 40 years later, they've been wandering around the desert. They're about to enter the promised land. They're free. They're free from Egypt. But now they're going to be free, free. They're going to have their land that was promised to them. They were going to have a land that is beautiful, that is um, flowing with milk and flowing with honey. And it's right there. They can actually see it. All they have to do is cross the river. And we get to read about this in Deuteronomy chapter 8. God is giving his nation, um, his promised people, his people a little bit of a warning before they actually enter into the promised land. So I'm going to show you what he says, um, but these words are not just for the Israelites back then. These words are for us as well. Very applicable today because eventually we're going to get out of this desert-like season of COVID-19 and social distancing and ECQ and GCQ. And actually right before I started recording this, I found out about the news that the military has entered Cebu City. I know that's not easy. I know that's not tough. You can only walk around in your own barangays. Um, everyone just doesn't know where this is going and when this is going to end. But eventually, we're going to leave all this behind. Eventually, we're going to enter not a not a land flowing with milk and honey, but we're going to enter a world of jeepneys and um, la'ag and barbecues and larshan and we're gonna re-enter some version of normal. And things are gonna get a little bit better. Probably probably one day, you know, when we're all removed from the danger of sickness, uh, hopefully, probably, you know, we're gonna have jobs, all those things are gonna come back, playing basketball, uh, doing sports, going to the beach, all of that stuff will come back, haircuts will come back, going to SM, going to Ayala, it will, it, it will all come back. And we are going to have the exact same temptations as Israel had when they were de delivered from, 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 the, from the desert. And God wanted to warn Israel. And I think God wants to warn us as well. So here's what he said to them right before they crossed the Jordan and entered into the promised land. Deuteronomy um, chap verse, no, chapter 8 verse 1. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Now, be careful, he says, follow my commands not because I want you to follow my commands so I'll be happy and pleased with you. No, God says, I give you these commands for your benefit, for your benefit, not mine. I want you to live long. I want you to have an amazing life. And so following my commands will make your life better. And he continues, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you will keep his commands. Now, when I read this, I, th I think this is a little odd. Why would God have to test their hum humility? I mean, they were a slave nation. They were wandering around the desert for 40 years. They were hungry. I mean, isn't that humbling enough? But do you know why God had to humble the Israelites? It's because they were people like me, like you. As a person, our natural reaction when things start going good is to just lean back on ourselves. Look what I did. I am awesome. This is what I did. It is not normal for us to lean into humility. And God is reminding us that you need to be Humble. You need to be tested in your humility because if not, you're going to turn your back on yourself. To, you're going to go turn back to yourself. You're going to go away from God. And I'm just warning you, don't do that. Verse 3. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of of the Lord. See, isn't it interesting? 
When we think about the season that we are in, we, we kind of start to wonder, did God cause this? Did God allow this? And I, thought, I think those are interesting questions. Um, I think they're probably good for a sermon some other day. Maybe we can let the theologians um, argue and debate, debate about, did God cause it? Did God allow this? Um, I think, did God cause this is a very interesting question. But it's not as interesting um, or it's not as important as what can we learn from this. And what God is trying to teach his people, and I think what God is trying to teach us today, is that dependence on him is what matters the most. He's saying, don't forget that everything that you have comes from me. Don't forget that. He goes on. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to him and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of it. What an unbelievable promise. I mean, there's a difference here. See, back in the desert, they were hungry. God provided them with manna. They had enough to eat for a day. This is different. God is saying, yeah, yeah, manna was nice, but you're about to enter a land where you will not lack anything. In fact, there's going to be so much bread you will not be able to consume it all. You will not know what to do about it. It was a promised land. It was a beautiful land. And they were about to enter it. And this is exciting. Then God takes a little turn because um, he wants to remind them of something really, really important. In verse 10, he says this. When you have eaten, when, when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you today. God's saying, eventually, you're going to be satisfied. Eventually, you're going to move into the promised land. Eventually, you're going to have everything that you're going to ever need. And when you do, don't forget the Lord your God. Don't forget him. Otherwise, when you eat and you're satisfied and when your herds are growing and your flocks are nice and, and, and expanding and growing in numbers, when your houses are fine and you're building and, and, and you have everything, your gold and your silver has multiplied, when all that happened, when everything is great, when everything is better than you could have ever imagined, your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, who brought you out of the desert, who brought you out of slavery. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hand has done this for me. And um, that's kind of our temptation, right? It's kind of our temptation that when things are good, we don't blame God, right? We say, hey, good job, I'm doing good. Um, yay, me. When things go bad, we start blaming God. And then when things turn around and start getting better again, you know, we take all the credit for it. Um, look at what I did. Look what I got. Look what I reaped from my work, my intelligence, my strength of my hands. Sa akong kakugihan. And God says, no, don't do that. Don't fall into that trap. Instead, verse 18, remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Now, I don't know if you know the rest of the story, but the Israelites crossed the River Jordan, entered the promised land, and it was better than they could have ever, ever, ever imagined. Their houses were beautiful. Their herds and their flocks grew. There were pomegranates and fig trees, and they just had to grab it off their shoes. They lacked nothing. They had more bread than they could possibly imagine. Everything that God promised, they 
had it all. You know what they did? They forgot. They forgot to remember the Lord their God. They forgot to remember. In fact, listen, almost the entire Hebrew scripture, almost the entire Old Testament is the story of Israel forgetting God and things go bad and then remembering God and things get better. It was a roller coaster of spiritual connect and disconnect with God over and over again. They would remember and obey his commands. Life would get good. Not because God was rewarding them, but because when you obey God's commands, things get better. And then they would forget about God in the good times. And they would depend on themselves. And it would be all about look at me and pride. And there's no humility whatsoever. And things would go wrong. Again. And that's the story of Israel. And I hate to admit it. It's, it's kind of the story of me. That's probably the story of you. I mean, depending on God delivers me when I'm in the desert. Depending on God delivers me when I'm in the desert. But depending on me destroys me when I'm in the promised land. Every single time. When things are good, when our family's good, when nobody's sick, the grades are good, the bills are paid, the jobs are good, everything's good, we pat ourselves on the back and we say, hey, good job, Ken. Good job, me. And that's a temptation. It's a temptation that we all have I think it's normal. I think it's part of our nature. But what God is doing here and what God is warning Israel about is don't do that. And I think God is warning us as well. And here's why that matters for us. Eventually, this season is going to be over. Eventually, we're going to move past COVID-19. And we're going to move past social distancing. And we're going to move past all of that eventually. Eventually, we'll be able to go get haircuts again. Eventually, we'll be able to um, la'ag again. Eventually, pwede na tamo palito sardinas o nilatang o walay limit. Eventually, pwede na tamo duwag basket. Kinsa kimi nga basket dere. Ako. When this all started in the States, people went nuts buying toilet paper. I, I, I don't know why it wasn't acetaminophen or, or biogesic or toilet paper. Eventually, I'll be able to buy toilet paper again without standing in line. Ambot na lang, tingaliwa sila kadungog kabo og tubig. Eventually, things will go back to some version of normal, but it's definitely going to be better than what it is now. And just like Israel, when things get good, our temptation is to forget to remember. We're going to forget to remember the Lord, our God. Because right now in this desert life, we're not forgetting God, are we? I think we are praying more than we ever have. I think we are depending on God more than we ever had. Um, I think we're asking God to intervene, not just in our lives, but in the whole world more than we have ever, ever um, prayed for. And eventually things will probably get better for us. My fear is that we're going to forget who delivered us from this season. And that's the real challenge, right? That when things get better, not to forget to remember. Don't forget to remember the Lord our God. Don't ever think that you don't need Him, because you do. Don't forget to remember when you're healthy. Don't forget to remember when there's, there's, there's no worries about being sick. Don't forget to remember when, when you have food on your table. Don't forget to remember when you have a roof over your, house, over your head. Don't forget to remember when there's clothes on your back. Don't forget to remember with every breath you take, with every beat your heart makes to remember. God, don't forget to remember. That's God's warning to Israel. They didn't listen to him and it didn't go well. And you know what? I think we can do this. I think we can do this. I think we can remember God even after this season. And I'm not saying that it's going to prevent us from having bad seasons in the future. I'm not saying that life is going to be problem-free and pain-free. But I think 
it might protect our hearts. I think it might protect our attitudes towards God and each other. I think it's going to protect our, our, our minds and our hearts. And that's what really I'm praying for, for you, for me, for my family, for our families, for our church. And we may forget this season. See, that's the thing. One day, COVID-19 is just going to be, hey, remember in 2020 um, when COVID-19 was a big thing? Yeah, that was weird, huh? We may forget this season. Nothing but a memory. But I hope we will never, ever forget the God that delivered us from this season. So of all things I want to bring with me out of this season into the new season, you know, spending more time with family, um, putting less things on my schedule, um, all those good things, I think they're so great, but there's one more thing that I want to bring into the new season with me, and that's dependence. I want to bring a dependence on God from this season into the new normal, the season of new normal. Because I'm no better than Israel, and I'm no better than you. I'm going to be tempted in the new season of normal, when things are good, when everyone's healthy, when I seem good, when my family is good and healthy, I'm going to be tempted to depend on myself. And we just learned that self-dependency is a very fragile and dangerous, dangerous thing. God is truly the only one that we can always, always, always depend on. So, in this new season, how are you and how am I going to bring that dependence on God? What are we going to do to maintain that dependence on God? What are we going to do to remember not to forget the God that brought us through all of this. I think it might just be the most important thing that we learn from this season. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. Thank you for delivering the nation of Israel. Thank you, O Lord, for making these texts survive thousands of years. If we can read it to one another from Texas all the way to Cebu City. Thank you, God, that one day you will deliver us too. Thank you, God, that you have already an end in sight. Thank you, Father, um, that even though this is difficult and so much easier to say than actually do, that you will remind us to not forget you. Thank you, Father, um, for Quest. Thank you for your word. Thank you for all the volunteers and thank you, God, for everything that you're doing. Thank you for everything that these volunteers are doing in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, to reach people and to introduce them into a growing relationship with your son, Jesus. Father, we love you and we thank you. And I pray this in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
song the words that God is ever faithful that even if we're in the desert even if we're in the dark times that he is going to lead us through that and just like he did for the Israelites come through for them but you know as Ken said you know every time we're in the desert and we're all in the desert right now all we can think about is getting out um, I, you know I, I can say I feel the same way but I think it's also safe to say that God has our undivided attention right now. In fact, maybe you've even made him more of a priority right now than you have in the past, which is awesome. And just realize though that one day we're going to get beyond this. One day we're going to be out of all this. But just like the examples of the Israelites in, in the story that Ken shared with us, where they kind of forgot to remember who it was that really got them out of that situation. Let's be sure that we don't make the same mistake when we get beyond this. Because, uh, like I said, we're, we're all in the desert. We all want to get out. But what are we learning in this season that we really, really want to take with us into the next season? And if you have learned dependency on God during this time, then let's make sure that we carry that with us into the next season. So know that we're here for you. Know that we want the best for you. Know that we're praying for you. Um, and one of the things that our church has always been about is about practical application. You know, we talk about some great stuff. Ken gave us some great pointers today, but they're only going to matter if you can somehow find a way to apply those in your life. And so right after I'm done talking, we're going to put up some discussion questions where you can process those either on your own or even better with a, with a friend, either on a Zoom call or maybe with your family members that are watching with you today. Um, in fact, this content, even though it's live on Sunday mornings, it's up there all the time on Facebook and on our YouTube channel. So, you know, there are friends of yours that uh, maybe aren't involved in Quest, maybe don't even know about Quest. They may not even live in Cebu, but share this content with them because I think it's going to be really, really helpful for them. And it's a way for you to be an encouragement to somebody else during this challenging time. And so 
I just again want to say how grateful we are for all of you that have uh, have gone to our giving page at give.questsabu.com where all of our giving options are listed. We know that many of you are, are stretched and challenged financially and your first priority is to take care of your family. But those of you that can, we have just been so blessed that you're continuing to be faithful in your giving and to be generous with Quest because the ministry still continues. We need you more than ever during this time. So you can go to that. You can continue to be involved. And again, thank you so much for being a part of Quest in that way. Um, I just want to say again, thanks for joining us. Share our content. Um, please stay safe this week. Um, God bless you. We're praying for you. Know that we love you. We miss you. Um, take care and we will see you soon, but for sure we'll see you back online within this week. Take care. Bye-bye.